Hi guys, welcome to this page of the notes and let's do one more problem dealing with hyperbola. Again, I have given you a formula, an equation for a hyperbola. I ask you to find all of that stuff and we're going to go ahead and graph it. So here's where we're going to start. I take a look at this guy. I see that it has a minus sign. That's how I know it's a hyperbola and not an ellipse, right? Um, the, if it was an ellipse, there'd be a plus sign in there, um, but I have a minus sign, so it has to be a hyperbola. The Y comes first, so that tells me that this guy is oriented vertically. It'll be a vertical hyperbola, uh, meaning the transverse axis is vertical. Transverse axis is vertical because the Y comes first. Uh, it also tells me then that this is a squared. Once again, please notice that this number is smaller than this number. That's okay. It's going to happen for hyperbola, right? It's going to happen. So in this case, a is, um, that's a squared, so a would be 3. Oh, actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's get our center, which is h, k. So that is going to be equal to, it's x minus h. How did I get a plus 3 in there? Well, I get a plus 3 in there if h is a minus 3. And it's y minus k, it's so okay, it's got to be 4. All right, so I know that I am vertical. It's going to be a vertical, um, vertical hyperbola centered at minus 3, 4. And now, a and b, that's a squared. Take the square root. That's b squared. Take the square root. So a is 3 and b is 5. I think I've got everything I need at this point to go ahead and um, graph this guy. My center is at negative 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. My transverse axis is vertical, and A has to go on the transverse. So that'll be up 3. 1, 2, 3, there. Oh, let me do it a different color. There is my vertice. There's my other vertice. And now my B, which is always the conjugate axis, which will run perpendicular to the transverse or horizontal, is going to be over 5 and back 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Awesome. Now, my box, my rectangle, goes through the vertices and the covertices. So. I should have a rectangle that looks like that. I know that my asymptotes need to go through the di um, on the diagonal through the box, and it's got to go through the corners. Awesome. I feel really good about that. Now remember. Your hyperbola must go through the vertices, through the vertices, can't touch the asymptotes. So, like that. Look at how wide this one is, which is exactly what I would told you would happen when the conjugate axis, when the conjugate axis is bigger than the transverse axis, it, it really sort of shrinks, it compresses that hyperbola down so you get those real wide looking, oh sorry about that, you get those real wide looking parabolas. Again, if the transverse axis were longer than the conjugate axis, right, then you get kind of those narrower parabolas. So anyway, there it is. There's my hyperbola. Looks awesome. There's our graph. Let's go ahead and pull all the information off of it that we need. I already found the center, so let's get the vertices and the covertices. Uh, the vertices, there are two of them. They are at to negative 3, 1, negative 3, 1, and negative 3, 7, negative 3, 7. Find the covertices. There are two of them as well. I've got one at 2, 4. That's that one over there. And I've got one at, what is that, minus 8, 4. All right, so there's my vertices and my co-vertices. Ooh, I 
almost forgot about the foci. That would have been bad. Um, okay, so remember the foci you're going to get by doing, pull it right, it's right on the formula sheet. Uh, it is C is equal to A squared plus B squared. Take the square root. So C is equal to uh, A squared is 9, B squared is 25. Add those guys together. What's that give me? 30... Four, yeah, the square root of 34, that's not nice. My calculator approximates the square root of 34, which is an irrational number, as 5.83. So my foci would be up 5.83. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.83 puts me somewhere right up there as a foci. 0.83, somewhere right down there is my other foci, that from the center. Up 5.83 from the center, down 5.83 based on uh, my value of C, which is the distance from the center to the foci. And I think that takes care of everything except for the asymptotes. So let's go ahead and run through that again. All right, we saw in the last one there are two asymptotes. One is the positive, one is the negative. Because my uh, hyperbola, the um, transverse axis is oriented vertically, I would need, right, pull it right off the formula sheet so you find centered at HK, um, vertical orientation, and you should get this. Y minus K is equal to A over B this time. So A over B, X minus H, and Y minus K. And you need the negative one. So minus A over B, X minus H. All right, at this point, guys, just plug everything in. You know K, you know H, you know A, you know B. Plug all that stuff in. I've got Y minus 4 is equal to 3 over 5X. Um, H is a minus 3, so minus a minus, so that's going to be a plus 3. Same thing over here. Y minus 4 is equal to negative 3 fifths. X plus 3. Um, okay, so I got to distribute the three fifths through the parentheses, distribute the negative three fifths through the parentheses, add four to the other side. I wind up with y is equal to three fifths x plus nine fifths plus four. Y is equal to minus three fifths x minus nine fifths plus four. You do all that. Um, I would leave it as a decimal, leave, leave your y-intercept as a decimal because it's generally easier to graph a decimal than a fraction. Um, I'll give you both of them though. So you wind up with 3 fifths x as a fraction, I get plus 29 fifths, which is exactly the same as 3 fifths x plus, what is that, 5.8, 5.8. So either one of those, again, that's the one I would probably graph, 5.8, um, um, but 29 fifths may be what I give you if you're taking this class with me in the multiple choice section, because I generally like to leave uh, in the multiple choice section, um, I like to leave them as fractions rather than decimals. Over here, I wind up with minus 3 fifths x. Again, feel free to use your calculator. Should be 11 fifths, which as a decimal is 2.2. Again, both mean the exact same thing. If I were graphing, I'd probably graph that one. Generally easier to graph decimals. Um, but again, if it were a multiple choice question, almost always I'll leave those in fractional form. And that takes care of the asymptotes. All right, guys, that takes care of everything for this section of Chapter 9 on hyperbola. Again, we have seen this kind of idea over and over and over again. Really what it comes down to, as long as you've got that formula sheet, just need to figure out the values of A, H, and K. Figure out the values of A and B, right? And once you've got that stuff, it's plug and chug. Um, watch the details, okay? Um, I've, you've seen a couple of times, it's easy to make mistakes, to lose signs. It's written on the formula sheet right in front of you. Please make sure you copy it correctly. Take your time going through them so that you don't make those simple mistakes. And really, I think these problems are a lot of fun. They, they're really neat. They look great to graph. 
They're not that difficult. Um, keep, uh, completing the square is really the only algebra that we've done in here. The rest of it, as long as you've got that formula sheet, is plug and chug. I had a great time going through conic sections with you guys, and I'll see you next time.